Hey book baddies! I hope you're having a great day, week, weekend, whenever you're getting around to watching this. If you've seen one of my videos in the past, welcome back. Glad to see you again. If you are new here, um, welcome. My name is Hydes or Heidi and this is my channel all around book related content um, where we just talk books, unbox books, etc, etc. And today we are going to be going over my August um, wrap up. And I wound up finishing 16 books in August, which is, I think, the most that I've ever finished in a month since I've been at least tracking. I don't know if I've beat 16 books. I will say, though, some of the books were really short, so that definitely played into some of that. I also had a couple of DNFs this month. I feel like that's just becoming a trend for me where I'm just kind of, if I'm not into a book, we're just getting rid of her and then if you are new to the book community and you don't know what dnf is that just means did not finish so if you hear dnf that's all that simply means um so i hope that you get comfy we got a lot of books to go over as always get your drink of choice your tea your coffee etc etc get comfortable um, I have a black tea today. This is my mushroom mug, which I just adore this mug. One of my friends got, gave this to me for either my birthday or Christmas. I can't remember, but I just love it. I think it's so cute. So I hope you have a lovely drink so that you can take a couple sippy sips while we're going through this. Okay, as per usual, how I do these videos is I start with my DNFs, just kind of briefly go over um, those, I then go into the audiobooks that I finished. I'll go into the um, ebooks and then I'll get into the physical books. I have my notes, so if you see me looking down, it's only because a girl has ADHD. I need as much help staying organized as I can. We got to stay organized because if I'm not organized, we're going to be here forever. So um, we will go ahead and start again with the DNFs. And the first DNF that I had for August was The Summer of Broken Rules, and that is by K.L. Walther. I believe that is how you pronounce that. This was following uh, Meredith, and her family goes to, I believe it's Cape Cod, for a family holiday, I want to say every single year. So this is her fam like her family's going to their annual family outing. And this particular outing is happening after a death in the family. So it's, you know, kind of a bittersweet outing. And I wound up not really liking this book. I think that it's a little too YA for my preference. If you really like YA, this might definitely be up, like more up your alley than it was for me personally. Um, I also feel like I didn't really feel like a lot was going on and the love interest that was try like the author was trying to form kind of came off as really forced to me and really sudden um so I think I got 20 or 25 percent maybe the way through if I remember correctly maybe a little bit further in just wasn't for me I know a lot of people love it if you enjoyed it I'm glad you did just the writing style didn't work for me. Again, a little too YA. So that was my first DNF for August. The second one I think might be a little controversial because most people that's read this book absolutely adore this book. And that is um, Gideon the Ninth. And that is by Tamsin Muir. And this is a fantasy, like a gothic fantasy sci-fi book where you're following predominantly Gideon um, who is a swords well it, at the start of the book she is a servant to the ninth house and she is a swordswoman and she's basically selected to compete in this competition by the um one of the ladies of the house called Harrow Hark and Harrow Hark is a necromancer who wants to compete to become a one of like the king or lord's necromancers um I thought that Gideon was really obnoxious I felt that 
the author tr was trying too hard to make the characters edgy and to make them like rough around the edges and it just didn't translate for me personally. Um, I didn't like Gideon. I didn't like Hero Park. They hate each other. Um, but like basically like our Hero Park is like forcing them to be in proximity, proximity with each other for this competition. And it just didn't work for me. I think again, I probably got about 20-ish percent of the way through. Most books I try to get about 20% of the way through, 25% of the way through before I DNF them because I really want to give books like a chance like you know sometimes it takes a minute to like pick up and it just didn't work for me um and so that was Gideon the Ninth so my third DNF was Fireborn and that is by Rosera uh Moon Mo Mundun Mundun excuse me I probably severely botched that um I came across this book because uh it was kind of pitched to me as a YA um fourth wing because there is a like the like the characters are dragon riders and there is a dragon college and there's a competition and they're basically trying to become like the next dragon riders to protect their kingdom essentially and we're following annie and lee i and then you're getting the dual point of view so you're getting both of their povs swapped back and forth I thought this book was really dry. I thought it was really boring. Um, none of the characters to me really had any personality. Uh, I just felt like not a lot was going on in my opinion. And so I just, I could not get interested in the book personally. So that's why I wound up DNFing it personally. If, again, if you're more into like YA, this might be a great option for you. Um, just this particular YA was another one that did not work for me. So those are my um, three DNFs for August. So we'll go ahead and roll into the audiobooks that I finished. And I'm going to go ahead and take a drink here real quick. Mm, delicious. <coughs> oh my goodness, excuse me. So the first audiobook that I finished in August was Come As You Are. And that is by um, Dr. Emily Nagoski and she has a PhD. I rated, I wound up rating this a four star so I did enjoy that book. So the entire premise of the book is basically sexual education for women um, essentially and I will say that this is around cis women and not trans women. Um, and she puts like a preface at the beginning of the book in regards to why it's kind of just geared towards just cis women and not trans women. And she basically says that there's not enough science and all of the information she's sharing is pretty much solely science based. She does put in some, um, what do I want to say? Um, like comparisons and stuff like that and some of her own observations uh this was a good book I thought it was very informational it was very dry it came off as very like textbook in my opinion which for the information that is being presented I think that it was good that it was definitely coming off as very dry very sciencey so I had to listen to this book in like chunks at a time um just because it was so dry. I couldn't just sit there and just like go for like, you know, a few hours, you know, three, four, five hours. Because sometimes I can listen to an audiobook for that long. This one was just too cumbersome of information for me personally. So I did uh, wind up rating that a four star. I thought it was really good information. Um, I'm glad that I read it. I feel like I've learned um, more about, you know, like like sexual health and sex and I think that it was really really like good as a full-grown adult to actually get some of this information which we probably should have already gotten but you know education in America also I just want to let you know it is blazing hot here and girl is sweating right now we have our AC on and I have the fan on and I'm still blazing so if you see me like sweating that's what's going on I don't know why it's so hot. It just is. It's disgusting. And I'm, I'm personally over it. 
Um, so anyways, I digress on that point. Um, so the next audiobook that I wound up finishing was The Wedding People, and that was by Allison uh, Aspech, and this is a new release. I adored this book. It is so good. This was a five-star. I could not put this down. I just wanted to keep eating up this book. Um, you're following Phoebe, and <laughs> so she at the beginning of the book, she goes and rents, not rents, well, I guess she goes and gets a hotel room where her plan is to go order room service and kill herself in a hotel. That is the preface of this book. When she gets there, the entire hotel is supposed to be rented out for this like very extravagant wedding. So it was kind of a fluke that she even got a room rented to begin with um from this hotel because it was supposed to be booked out and so she winds up like running into the bride and they have this little like tiff back and forth and th like different uh, things happen and she winds up like getting involved with this wedding and I don't want to tell you too much I don't want to spoil anything but the characters like she is so real she is so just you know like honest and kind of crass and I love the relationships between the characters I love just like the rawness of the story I the like just like how the story unfolds was so good I loved how the book ended so this was just knocked it out of the park for me I've told everybody about this book five stars it's so good I loved this book loved it. I recommend this to anybody and everybody. So that was The Wedding People. Um, the next audiobook that I wound up finishing was the, the my book club that I'm in. This was our August pick and that, um, that book is What My Bones Know and this is by Stephanie Fu and this is a memoir where she is going over her trauma and you know like it was going kind of over her life. It was going over trauma. It was going over like trauma responses and some of like the psychological stuff about trauma. And I, I struggle to give you my star rating with this only because I'd, I don't want to like rate somebody's trauma because that sound like that comes off as very judgmental. Because obviously, like, this is her experience, and I never want anybody to feel like their experience isn't valid. But the writing of the book, to me, just wasn't, it just wasn't good, in my opinion. Like, I just, I thought that the book was really repetitive. Um, I thought that it was, quite frankly, like, the pacing was really boring. It was so slow, and I struggled through getting, like, the book. And other folks in my book club also really struggle to get through the book. Um, and it just, I think it was just because it was so repetitive and so, it just felt so long. Um, so I did wind up rating this a two star. And again, it's not because of the context of her trauma. It's because of how she wrote the book. Because like the information was interesting, but it was just not well executed if that makes sense. So that's why I wound up rating it a two star because I just, it was, it was a struggle to get through for me. Um, so that's where we are on What My Bones Know. The last audiobook that I finished was The Devil Wears Black and that is by uh, L.J. Shin. And this is a romance, I think it counts as a dark romance, don't quote me on that. Um, if it's a dark romance, it's a very light dark romance in my opinion. But in this story, we're following Maddie and Chase. You're getting a dual um, point of view. And Maddie and Chase were a, they are a couple that broke up. And Chase finds out that his father is dying of cancer. And to essentially bring everybody's spirits up, he lied because he never told his family that he was broken up with Maddie and he lied and said that they're engaged 
and now he's basically trying to get Maddie to agree to be his fake fiance to basically people please his family to give his dad like something to look forward to essentially. Um, this is a second chance romance. This is a forced proximity. I enjoyed it. Um, it was it was a good standard romance for me. Um, I like the banter between the characters. I found it funny. A little cheesy at times, a little overdone at times, um, but all in all I think it was a pretty good book. I rated this a three star, so nice right in the middle book for me personally. So uh, it, it was it was decent. Uh, it was, if you um, were thinking about it, it's good enough for at least a listen. So those are all of my audiobooks for August. So we're going to go ahead and move into the ebooks that I read. I'm going to go ahead and get another drink. Hopefully I won't choke this time. Mm, sometimes just tea just hits so good. All right. So the first ebook that I finished in August was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I've said it in the past and I'm going to say it again. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love her writing style. I love how she like gets you into the story. I love how she gets you into the characters. Um, she just is a crisp writer and she just, she just draws you in. And this particular book is following four, si well, you, uh, you two timelines. And in one of the timelines you're following four siblings. And then the other timeline you're following their parents. So in the modern day timeline, you're following Nina, Jay, Hud, and Kit. It's mostly Nina's um, point of view. And in the previous timeline, you're following, again, their parents. And this is a book about self-discovery. It's a book about trying to overcome some of your, like, emotions around your family. Um, it's family drama. And this is, Nina is, in the present, Nina is throwing a party. And all of these people are coming to this party that she throws every year. And it basically turns into a hot mess. And in the past, it's just following their parents. Meeting through, like, kind of, sort of the present. Um, so I really enjoyed this. Again, this was a four star for me. I really enjoy Taylor Jenkins Reid. I think that she just does phenomenal writing um, and I can't wait to wind up reading um, another book out of her collection of books. So good stuff, really enjoyed it. And now again, Malibu Rising. The next ebook that I wound up finishing um, is Stuffed and that is by Sylvia Morrow. And I read this because one of my friends was morbidly curious about it. So this is a, we'll call it a spicy book, sort of. Um, it's a weird book. And essentially, you're following this character. Her name is Annie. Anne? Anne, sorry. And she is, she has a, like a very hard time creating relationships with people in real life. And she never thinks that she's going to have a romantic partner. She doesn't feel like she's ever going to fall in love and then you are also so you're getting her perspective and you're also getting the perspective of her pillow that winds up coming alive and becoming her sexual partner it's a very weird book and it's not very good the writing is terrible this was a one star for me you can probably read this in literally probably maybe an hour or so. I think it's less, I'm pretty sure it's less than 100 pages. It's not very good. I don't recommend it, even for the morbid curiosity. It, it's not good. Chalk that one up to a loss. I don't know why I thought that there was going to be any redeeming qualities about this book going in. But again, it is what it is. So that was Stuffed, and again, I gave that a one star. Um, so the last ebook that I wound up finishing in August was called Thrum, and this, I believe, is a newer release, and this is by Meg Smitherman, 
and this is following Ami and Dorian and Ami is on a like she's in outer space and she's part of a um crew on a space like stage like shuttle on a space shuttle and their goal is to try to find um basically alien life forms and so they are being like they were shipped off in like galaxies and galaxies and galaxies away from earth um and so she wakes up from stasis and everybody on her crew is dead and she comes into contact with an alien life form who is called dorian and you just see the story unfold from there it's a very quick read. I don't want to go too crazy into it, but it was a four star. I could not put it down. I wanted to know what the next thing was. The ending was pretty solid. So if you are looking for a quick sci-fi, this is good. It's on Kindle Unlimited. So that, again, that's Thrum. So that was my last ebook for August. Yeah, let me get a little drinky drink here. And we're going to go into the physical books that I finished, which was nine. So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and just get right into it since there are so many. The first one is called Pond Water. And the only reason I wound up picking this up is because I found this on the TikTok shop. This is the only thing I've actually ever purchased off of the TikTok shop. And all of the proceeds were going to the author to help pay her medical bills yay american health system not so much um and the author is brenda fire eagle biddix this was a very quick read it's very short and i feel like this potentially could have been a really great thriller for like middle grade uh, you're following Jared, who is a mer ex -mer like an ba oh, battle scarred Navy SEAL, and he notices weird things going on in his neighborhood. And one of his neighbors keeps like drinking water out of this pond. And I'm not going to go too far into it because again, I'm not trying to do like spoilers. But it could it, like it's an interesting concept not that well executed in my opinion so i did wind up rate, like rating this one star sorry it just really needed a lot of editing but if this could actually would like get re-edited this could really be something really interesting especially for like a middle grade thriller which i don't even think exists but i think that this could be this could be it so that was pond water um <clears throat> So the next physical book that I wound up finishing was The Midnight Library, which I know is super, super popular. And that is by Matt Haig. I think that's how you, I think I will say that's how you say his name. Again, I'm probably botched everybody's name, so I'm so sorry. Uh, this is following um, Nora Seed, and she is just not having a great time in life. And she winds up in what is called the midnight library after some turn of events and in the midnight library basically what she can do is live out different possibilities of her life to see if certain i if certain choices were changed in her life um how different her life could have been so you get to basically see her like oh if i changed this career or if i changed you know who i fell in love with you get to see like how her life like unfolds with different elements of her life being changed by different choices she made um <clears throat> so the author it, like not the author the so nora is definitely like i think i think she's going through depression and she's definitely got some mental illness stuff going on and i think that this was a good book in concept, but the execution was not that good. Um, I hated the ending and I don't want to, I am trying to say this without giving any spoilers, but to me, this turned from a really interesting story to almost a self-help book that <laughs> kind of turned into like, if you change your perspective, then you're not going to be depressed anymore. And I just... 
I just didn't like this. I didn't like the mental health representation. And I feel like if a young person read this with mental health, this could do more damage than good. In my opinion, that is my opinion. I know a lot of people love this. And I know that that's a hot take on this book, but I, I just, I didn't like the mental health representation in this at all. And I, I just, I can't get behind it personally. So that's why I rated this a two star. I, it just wasn't for me. And I will not be recommending this to me people personally. So that's just my opinion. So again, <clears throat> that was the Midnight Library. <coughs> Excuse me. It is so hot. I am literally sweating so bad. Ooh. I probably should have done iced coffee or iced tea at this point because I don't know what it is, but I'm dying. Um, anyways, so the third physical book that I wound up finishing, I don't have a copy of because I borrowed it from one of my coworkers, and that is Slender Man, and it is um, by Anonymous. So kind of the cool thing about this book is nobody knows who wrote this book. And this book is following some of the Slender Man um, lore. Um, so basically, you're following Matt, who is a high schooler who is friends with another student named Lauren. And Lauren goes missing. And they're trying, like, everybody's trying to find her. And Matt has, at one point, he's being accused because of his friendship with Lauren. And how, just a bunch of different things are happening. Um, and, like, if you see why he's accused, it kind of makes sense why he's accused. If you didn't know his side of, like, the story, essentially. And essentially, like, she's like kidnapped by slender man this is a like this isn't following the stories around like the girls that you know the girl that got killed by by like the other girls because of slender man this is like a um like a fiction around slender man so just kind of a fyi i really enjoyed this book um i really liked that it so some of the writing was in like text form some of the writing was in emails some of the writing was in like letters, uh, like newsletters. So this was a really good book. I really liked the pacing of the book. I really liked how it was like the mixed media that you were reading through the story. So you kind of got different points of view through like newsletters and then like through interviews with police officers and all of this other stuff. And I just wanted to keep knowing what was happening. Like I needed to know the next piece of information. I read this in a day. Like, I could not put it down. It was so good. Um, I wound up rating this a four star. I highly recommend if you like um, Slender Man lore, if you are into, like, a thriller, mystery, whodunit situation, this is really good. I really recommend it, and I really enjoyed it. So that was um, Slender Man by Anonymous. Um, so the next physical book that I wound up reading was Belladonna. Let me grab the book. And that is by Adeline Grace. And this is the first book in a trilogy. The last book actually just came out. And this is a YA mystery with like magical elements in it. So you are following uh, Signa and she is orphaned. And has basically been taken in by various family members throughout her life. And she's really had it rough. Um, but one thing about her is she can't die. And she also communicates with death. And her one of her last family members like winds up dying. And so she gets shipped off to the actual last bit of family she has. And one of her family members went, was killed. And she's trying to solve the mystery of the death. Um, I enjoyed this. This was well paced. I think the writing was pretty good. Um, I enjoyed the characters. I will say I thought that the pacing was a little 
fast at the beginning. And what I mean by that is just like her build up with her relatives and her like, it was almost like a forced, um, like almost felt like forced her relationship with her relatives that she just meets. So I didn't really like that element. But other than that, that was like my really only like true complaint about the book. But I think that this world is really whimsical. Um, I can just imagine like the world in like my mind. It just seems so pretty. Uh, so I really like this. This was good. I'm looking forward to reading Foxglove and continuing this story. I wound up rating this a three star. Pretty good um, YA fantasy mystery book in my opinion. So it's good. I liked it. So our next um, physical book I picked up from an indie book store a couple of months ago and this is Love Novel and this is by Ivana Sajko. I know that this was written in a different language and has been translated. This is a this is like a critique of love as well as late capitalism and it's interesting and if you like critiques like this might be a really good book for you. Um, you're following two characters the main male character, he is a Dante scholar, and then his wife is a <clears throat> an actress. And this is following, like, their story and, like, them trying to be in love in, like, late stage capitalism. And it's just, it's, it's different. It's unique. To be honest with you, though, like, I like critiques, but I found this one to be kind of boring, personally. I was just like, meh, it's okay. So this was a two star for me. This is definitely not going to be for everybody. Pick it up if you like critiques. Don't pick it up, I would say, for most people. Like, I would say like the majority of people are not going to enjoy this. But there will be some that will. But this just didn't do it for me personally. So it was a no thank you. And this was, I, I rated it a 2, 2.5. So yeah, it was okay. The next physical book that I wound up reading and finishing was Happy Place by Emily Henry. This is my second Emily Henry book and I just enjoyed this. I really like Emily Henry's writing. Um, it's just clean, it's crisp, it's to the point and I just really like it. I like her dialogue with the characters. Um, this particular book is following Harriet. Um, as the main female character and her and her now ex-fiance wind up being forced together on a friend, like a friend's weekend. And they have to basically, like they haven't told their friends that they weren't, like they, they broke up and they're trying to create this facade during this entire week of their friend's vacation and basically pretend that they're still in love and still together and it's just watching them go through the week and trying to be okay with being around one another they kind of talk about their feelings they talk about the past you actually get a dual timeline you get like the present which is their week with their friends and then you also get stories from their past to know where their relation like how their relationship built where you know like it went how it wound up breaking down i really enjoyed this again i'm a fan of emily henry this um i wound up rating as a four star so i enjoyed this not as much i didn't enjoy it as much as i love book lovers but that is probably going to be my number one of emily henry probably forever so my next physical book that i wound up finishing was the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde and this, <laughs> this is just giving like a gay drama. I'm going to say it. This is just giving gay drama. So we're following Dorian and he is a young impressionable man. And he winds up getting his portrait painted by a painter named Basil. 
and then also befriends a lord uh his name is lord henry and he he's very like vapid he's very shallow um and again he's in a very impressionable time in his life and he's listening to life advice from both uh basil as well as lord henry mostly lord henry and lord henry is questionable the man is questionable uh and then he also so he gets this portrait painted of him and basil like shows him the portrait and i guess like dorian is like upset that like he's always going to now be older than the painting like he's always going to age past what he looks like in the painting and it's just like the whole thing is so vapid and i'm just like lord henry and basil are like obsessed with dorian it's really weird um and i know that this is a critique of like that time period i enjoyed the book i think that it was like well written um i'm not really a huge fan of classics just because i struggle because i find a lot of them pretty boring to be honest with you but i did enjoy this one enough this was a three star for me it's it's short if you're looking for just in my opinion gay drama this is gay drama i said what i said and i i stand behind it so picture of dorian gray three star for me uh so the next one that i finished is part of your world by abby jimenez this easily a five star this book this book it had me choke hold choke hold this is so good we are following alexis and daniel and she is a doctor he is an innkeeper slash carpenter and by some random fate she winds up like at the beginning of the book uh rolling her car off of the road because of she's trying to like swerve to miss a raccoon daniel comes along and tows her out and then they wind up re-meeting at a local bar and then this is their story falling in love from there and this this had me in a chokehold i just I, I I still tear up if I think about it too much. This book is so good. This book is so good. This is a miscommunication trope, which I guess Abby Jimenez is like known for. I, this is the only book I've read by her, so I cannot confirm that. But this book right here, five star, five star. It's so good. So good. Just read this book. It's so good. Oh, I just, I just want to hug it. I just want to hug it because I loved it so much. Okay, we're on to our last book, and that would be Margo's Got Money Troubles, and this is by Rufy Throop, and this book is, it's entertaining for sure. So you're following Margo, who is a college student that winds up getting into a relationship-ish with one of her professors. She winds up getting pregnant and she has to decide whether or not she's keeping the baby, which she winds up keeping the baby. And it's her struggling as a single parent because the father doesn't want anything to do with Marco because he's married and has kids and, you know, the whole, that whole thing. And it's watching her like struggle and trying to be creative as a 19 year old with a baby and she struggles with her relationship with her mom she her father comes back into her life and she struggles with you know trying to figure out her relationship with her father and what that relationship is going to look like and it's good i really i enjoyed this book i found it entertaining um i thought that the banter was good it's pretty short and like i like the writing style I wound up rating this a three star, maybe a three and a half. It's either a three or a three and a half for me. Um, so it was good. I, I did enjoy it. So if you've thought about picking this up, it's a good, it's, it's a fun, funny read with serious topics being discussed. So Margo's Got Money Troubles. <clears throat> so 
sorry my throat was getting dry that was my final book that I wound up reading in August which was so many so if you're still here thank you I know that, that was a lot of books that we went over um please let me know if you've read any of these books if you liked them didn't like them agreed with my opinions didn't agree with my opinions that's okay we're all allowed to have our different opinions just if you disagree you know do it in a polite nice way we don't have to you know get me or anything like that so um if you like this content please go ahead and subscribe um you'll hit the subscribe button but make sure you hit the bell because that will notify you when a new video is up and I do hope to see you in the next video. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope you have a great rest of your day, week, weekend. And um, have a good one. Love you. Bye.